<laughs> we might roll it. Sounds rolling. Roll four, take seven. Well, the American helicopters in the south became vulnerable in 1972 to a heat-seeking rocket carried by the uh, communist infantrymen. It was only it was easily carried by an infantryman. It was only uh, about three foot long, and it was heat-seeking, which meant that it. Uh, if it was fired in the direction of a helicopter or uh, any low-flying aircraft, it would um, explode uh, right at the exhaust. Uh, it took great toll of them for quite a while. It, it honed was, in on the heat of the engine, did it? Yes, it honed in on the, on the heat of the engine, which, of course, was the exhaust. Um, so, uh, eventually, the Americans uh, thought of something quickly. They had to think of something quickly to overcome it. Half a million dollars a pop. That's well, right. it was more than some of the helicopters they were flying. Some of the combat helicopters were worth one and two million dollars. And uh, they did <laughs> design something very quickly, which we called the stovepipe. What it actually was was a, it looked like a, a, a country shack gone wrong with a with a, uh, a chimney stove exhaust, which they extended from the actual exhaust and took it up in an L shape or an S shape actually, and. Uh, hung right out the back of the helicopter. Uh, they still got a nasty jolt in the helicopter because the rocket would uh, explode just outside. But uh, it did the job for the time being. Right. I believe uh, when K. Sam was on, a lot of American journalists in particular flocked to, to see it. Yes, yes because um, it was a classic example of uh, the, the communist uh, forces besieging uh, what they call a colonialist force, and I suppose it was an American force, many thousands of American Marines in Khe Sanh, surrounded by very heavy concentration of North Vietnamese, uh, besieged in fact. Very much like Dien Bien Phu. Very much like Dien Bien Phu, and if Khe Sanh had have been overrun and lost, it may have had the same result even then. How did the Americans get out of it? Well, eventually they got out of it because uh, the Marines who were occupying Khe Sanh didn't have the strength, the air strength, because the Marines don't have so many uh, helicopters or um, bombers, to um, extricate themselves. So the air cavalry, that is the paratroopers, the American paratroopers, um, sent in a great column with air support and many, many helicopter gunships, which uh, blasted away through to Khe Sanh. The, the interesting thing was, of course, that the Marines were very proud uh, didn't care to be uh, saved by their own countrymen who were not marines, they, they, were, they were airborne. And quite a lot of shots were fired by the marines, American marines, at the American helicopters who were actually saving them. Simply Some, because, many were hit, I don't know if any people were killed or not. Simply because of this petty jealousy between the two forces. Yes, you might call it petty jealousy, it was a big jealousy actually. <laughs> if you were in that helicopter coming well, in, you would have been, yeah. The Spring Offensive of 1972, you yeah. covered it and were the only Western journalist to do so. Why were you allowed to go with them? Oh, no, no. Many Western journalists covered the Spring Offensive. I was the only one which, uh, who was allowed to go with the Vietnamese frontline troops, and they were the Vietnamese Marines mainly, uh, on their uh, first counterattacks into what amounted to North Vietnam. It was the northern part of South Vietnam, but it was already captured by North Vietnam. Uh, well, that was because during uh, the previous years, I had continued to go out with the Vietnamese forces, particularly the Vietnamese Marines, and they acknowledged that. Uh, it was no different from any other time, but, but by that time the Americans were not fighting on the ground, no ground troops, and uh, the American correspondents had not gone with the Vietnamese, so the Vietnamese uh, didn't want them to go be with them on that occasion. Any heavy fighting? Oh, fantastically heavy. 1972 was the heaviest fighting, 1968 and 1972 were the heaviest fighting of the Vietnam War, much heavier than, than the actual fall of South Vietnam. What about the amphibious landing that you made? Yes, I did the uh, covered, I went with the South Viet Marines on the, on the only amphibious landing on a large scale of the Vietnam War and we went out to sea and uh, uh, went in onto a beach called Wanda Beach, that was what the name the Americans gave it, uh, in Quang Tri province, which was uh, literally North Vietnam at that time, onto a beach which was uh, 
occupied uh, and defended very heavily by North Vietnamese forces. So was this more or less like a, a commando type raid behind enemy lines? Yeah, it was a commando raid with uh, two battalions, I might say, it was about a thousand troops, but very, very heavy fighting. How long did that go for? Well, it went several days. We're, we went onto a, a terrible area called the Street Without Joy, it was well known as, as that. It was a sand dune area which extended several miles inland and, as I say, very heavily defended and extremely hot. Take eight, roll five. Ready? Yep. How hard was it on your relationship when you first met Neil? Um. It's okay. H how hard was it? You know, when you met Neil, he was always going off to wars or revolutions yes. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. How did you find that? Um. He told me what his work um, after we met, and uh, he told me he went to the battlefield often, and uh, I tried to ask him to change his job and try to be a businessman or some other job. Um, what he can do? Can you? Un do you think that Neil would make a good businessman? Mm, I, I think so, but uh, he said he's not interested in business. Why do you think he particularly likes being a cameraman? Um, he said cameraman um, can, be, uh, can go outside and walk in outside door and um, can, can see so many different things in the um, many places. Uh -huh. So he said he preferred to, to be a cameraman. Why do you think he likes to cover wars? Take nine, roll five. Why, why do you think Neil wants to go off to wars, revolutions? Um, he think that his uh, only job he can do and uh, also quite exciting for him. Is it the sort of thing you'd like to do? No, I don't. Yeah. No. Can you really understand why he likes to do that then? Um, no, not exactly. Um, do you think it's the, uh, the thing that he'll continue to do for the rest of his life? Yes, I think so. But now, because he's married now, so sometimes when he's doing something, maybe he will think about it. Uh -huh. Yes. He might be a little bit more careful. Yes. Would you like to have children? Yes, I do. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But you'll wait a little bit longer, you think, huh? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Is that what you really think, or would you like to have them now? I would like to have now. <laughs> yes. And what does Neil think about that? Oh, he's, he's thinking about this too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When he's away covering these things, what do you think about while he's away covering a story? Oh, no, it's quite all right because uh, he usually he goes to uh, Africa. No, it's quite peace in Africa, not so much dangerous <laughs> like, the, like in South Asia, Indochina world. So, um, I feel much better than before. Mm -hmm. Do you do you worry about him while he's away covering these things? Um. Yes. Sometimes. Yes. So what do you do to stop yourself worrying? Um. I keep my my myself busy, and uh, sometimes I go back to Taiwan and stay with my parents and uh, share happiness with my my family in mm -hmm. Taiwan. What do you think is the basic difference between Asian women and European women? Oh, that's for um, <clears throat> I think Asian women, they are quite um, not show up themselves. I mean, to not like a European women. They are quite open and uh, active than Asian. So. But European women are more open or aggressive or they speak more or, or what is it? No, I mean uh, they act they act more open and uh, Asian uh, women look so shy and uh, look gently. Is, is that right? Yeah. Yes. Is that why Neil likes you, you <coughs> think? Um, I think so. <laughs>
<laughs> do you think I'm look uh, shy and gently? Well, there's certainly that aspect here for sure, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, all right, um, it's good. Thank you. Thank you.